Day 28. Exodus 19-20. In the third month, on the same day of the month that the Israelites had left the land of Egypt, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. After they had set out from Rephidim, they entered the wilderness of Sinai, and Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, This is what you are to tell the house of Jacob and explain to the sons of Israel, You have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you will be my treasured possession out of all the nations, for the whole earth is mine. And unto me you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. And all the people answered together, We will do everything that the Lord has spoken. So Moses brought their words back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a dense cloud, so that the people will hear when I speak with you, and they will always put their trust in you. And Moses relayed to the Lord what the people had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. They must wash their clothes and be prepared by the third day, for on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you are to set up a boundary for the people around the mountain and tell them, Be careful not to go up on the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with arrows, whether man or beast, he must not live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they approach the mountain. When Moses came down from the mountain to the people, he consecrated them. And they washed their clothes. Be prepared for the third day, he said to the people. Do not draw near to a woman. On the third day, when morning came, there was thunder and lightning. A thick cloud was upon the mountain, and a very loud blast of the ram's horn went out, so that all the people in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was completely enveloped in smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in fire. And the smoke rose like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. And as the sound of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him in the thunder. The Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the summit. So Moses went up, and the Lord said to him, Go down and warn the people not to break through to see the Lord, lest many of them perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. But Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up Mount Sinai, for you solemnly warned us, Put a boundary around the mountain and set it apart as holy. And the Lord replied, Go down and bring Aaron with you. But the priests and the people must not break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above, on the earth below, or in the waters beneath. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on their children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But showing loving devotion to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, on which you must not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant or livestock, nor the foreigner within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, or his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sounding of the ram's horn, and the mountain enveloped in smoke, they trembled and stood at a distance. Speak to us yourself and we will listen, they said to Moses. But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Do not be afraid, Moses replied. 
For God has come to test you, so that the fear of him may be before you, to keep you from sinning. And the people stood at a distance as Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is what you are to tell the Israelites, You have seen for yourselves that I have spoken to you from heaven. You are not to make any gods alongside me, you are not to make for yourselves gods of silver or gold. You are to make for me an altar of earth, and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and peace offerings, your sheep and goats and cattle. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. Now if you make an altar of stones for me, you must not build it with stones shaped by tools, for if you use a chisel on it, you will defile it. And you must not go up to my altar on steps, lest your nakedness be exposed on it. Matthew 18 verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you, not just seven times, but seventy-seven times. Because of this, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlements, a debtor was brought to him owing ten thousand talents. Since the man was unable to pay, the master ordered that he be sold to pay his debt, along with his wife and children and everything he owned. Then the servant fell on his knees before him. Have patience with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. His master had compassion on him, forgave his debt, and released him. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down and begged him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay his debt. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and recounted all of this to their master. Then the master summoned him and declared, You wicked servant! I forgave all your debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured, until he should repay all that he owed. That is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart, 